Hey fellow e-learners, my name is David Charney with eLearningLocker.com. We had an interesting project the other day. Big course, slide after slide after slide after slide of full screen graphics. On one of those slides we wanted to have these three deep dives. We didn't want the learner to feel like they had left the slide or, uh, you know, got lost in the course. We wanted them to feel like they stayed on the slide and just drilled down deeper into each of these, these three categories. How do you let the learner drill down deeper in the course on that slide without feeling lost? In Storyline, you can move a box around, but you can't make it expand out from one size to another. Uh, people that are used to Flash are very comfortable doing that, but in Storyline, you don't have that sort of control. I can't say I want a, a box with this width and height, and when you click it, I want it to expand out to this width and height. Well, as you can see from the clips we keep showing, we did figure out a way in Storyline to do this. It is relatively simple, uh, although it takes a little bit of time to set up, but uh, it works very well and it's all in Storyline, so if you need to make adjustments, uh, you can do it easily within the program. Just to run you through this one more time, we've got three buttons. If you click on any of the buttons, it will expand out from that button size to a much larger full screen size. I can close that and click any of these buttons and they all work the same way. They'll expand out from kind of the center point of that button. So let's jump into Storyline and see how this works. So nothing too crazy about this base level slide. We've got a full screen background and we've got three buttons which are made up of a number of different elements that are grouped and then there's a button trigger on each. Then we've got a layer for each button and this is where all the magic happens. You'll see a whole big mess of motion paths. So I've turned off all the layers and all you can see now is the stuff on the base layer and I'm going to turn on a couple of these initial layers. So the first layer is just nothing more than a white box. There's no motion path on it because I don't want this box to move. I want it to stay put. Now on the next layer you'll see a motion path. So what I want to do is move this white box over so that the edge of this box is right up against the edge of the initial box. If I turn on the next layer you'll see I'm doing the same thing except I'm moving it 45 degrees up and to the right. So now you'll have a box here and a box up above. So as you can see as I keep turning on layers that I'm basically moving this one white box a box width up and to the side all the way around. So if I ran this right now you'd see a whole bunch of boxes reposition themselves. And if you're really good about lining up those boxes, you won't see any gaps in between them. So it'll basically look like one box is getting really big. Now, of course, to continue the effect, we don't want just the single box to get bigger. We want it to feel like it's expanding out and to the right. So if I turn on all the box layers, you'll see all the motion paths. Basically, all the boxes animating out to all sides. As long as the duration is the same and they all line up next to each other, all you'll see when you run this, because they're the same color, is a nice smooth animation, like they're animating from the center out to the extent of the, uh, of the slide. Then when all the boxes have moved into place, we have a simple uh, white box that fills the screen to kind of give you a blank canvas. And then we've got whatever additional layers of content, you know, a title, a close button, so we can close this layer. And you'll see in item three, we've got some additional uh, elements here. So that's it. So, you know, as you can see, it's actually pretty simple. It just takes a bit of time to put together. Then if you want to do any polishing, like for instance, we've got a little circle here with a check mark in it on a different state. And if you want to tell that state to show the check mark, you can do that too. And that, that'll make it easier for the user to know what they've seen or what they haven't seen. If you like this video, please click the like button below. Click subscribe to keep getting more videos about e-learning design and development techniques. If you'd like to download what we did today, check out eLearningLocker.com. Click subscribe. Click subscribe. Click subscribe to keep getting. Click sub. Click subscribe.